this science of astrology that we practice is called Vedic astrology. But why it is called Vedic astrology? It is called Vedic astrology because it is based on the Vedic concepts, the philosophy, the Vedic philosophy, it is based on that. The Vedic philosophy states that the reason behind a human birth and everything that we go through in this life is because of karma. With respect to karma, we know about Sanjit karma, Prarabdh karma and Kriyaman karma. Sanjit karma is all the stored karma. Prarabdh karma is the karma that you are supposed to go in this life and Kriyaman karma is what you are doing. But this is very introductory, right? This is just like categorizing the karma. These are the categories of karma, right? It does not indicate the nature of karma and how the karma system works. And particularly, right, as it is particularly told that like, like a calf can search his mother cow in the herd of cows, the karma of the person search the person and the result of the karma one have to go through. This complete Vedic astrology is based on the concept of karma only. Right. And this thing that we listen to, uh, that we hear, right, that yogis do not get the result of karma or yogis surpass their horoscope. How do they do that? They do it by practicing the karma in a particular way. Right. They do it by doing nishkam karma. So what is this nishkam karma is what we have to understand, right? Because our purpose is to break free from the chain of karma. And you cannot break free from the chain of karma by doing karma in the normal way. There have to be something specific. A way using which you can be free from this chain of karma. That is through nishkam karma. right? This has to be very clearly understood. Now Krishna also have very clearly told that karmano yapi bodhavyam bodhavyam cha vikarmana akarmanas cha bodhavyam gehna karmano gati. Karmano api bodhavyam you should know the karma. Bodhavyam cha vikarmana you should know the vikarma. Akarmanas cha bodhavyam you should know the akarma gehna karmano gati because the gati of the karma, the how the karma works, how the karma manifest is very gehen, right? Is very difficult to know. Right. But should be known very, very clearly. Right. The, this have to be understood. Now in this karma setup, so people do good karma and people do bad karmas. Any karma which is done with sattva in mind, sattvic karmas are good karmas. Which give us enjoyment in the current life and in the next life also. Rajas karma, rajasa dukha nivrati, rajas karma ends in dukha, misery. And tamas karma, adhogati. And tamas karma makes one be, you know, to a adham state, to a lower state of being. Animal etc. birth is because of tamas karma. So, there is one, you know, there is one, one karma kand view is there. That karma kand view is telling you that if you do good karmas, you will get good results. For an example, there is a very good story of Sankrachari and a lady, right? So Sankrachari was asking for arms. He goes to the house of a lady and comes to find out that the lady is so poor that lady cannot give anything to Sankrachari. Sankrachari being compassionate, understands her plea, her problem, goes to her home the next day and invokes, goes to her home the next day and invokes Goddess Lakshmi. After invoking, Goddess Lakshmi clearly tells her tells Sankaracharya that she have not done any donation in previous life. As a result of that, she is poor. Next, then there is the story that Sankaracharya makes some istuti to goddess because of which there is flow of gold coins from the sky and eventually whatever happens. So one thing is very clearly understood here that those people who do good karmas in the previous life, they get enjoyments because of that. So there is this particular reason, right? People generally ask the question that this is a person who is not doing any good karmas as such, but still they are enjoying in life. Or someone have done bad to us, but still they are enjoying in life. Why it is so? It is because of their past life karmas, right? Either good or bad, whatever. It is because of their past life karmas. So if someone have done good karmas in the previous life, they are going to enjoy as a result of that. 
and the enjoyment is there because of that enjoyment good result is particularly there because of donations and other good karmas yagya homa etc or the karmas told in shastras are good karmas as a result of those good karmas person is going to enjoy and as long as the result of the good karma will be there there will be enjoyment in the life now if the person continues to do good karma the enjoyment will increase and the life will always be full of enjoyment some time of suffering will be there but that time of suffering will be quickly over and the suffering will not be that great on the other hand if someone have good karmas but they engage in bad karmas then what will happen the time of the good karma will quickly pass and the enjoyment will not be that great eventually the result of bad karma will come into bad results in that bad result misery will be very intense and the suffering from the bad karma will be for a long time period right on the other hand people who are who have done bad karmas in the previous life born in a bad situation right because of that they suffer do, they do not get good opportunities etc in life if they continue to do the bad karmas the sufferings increase right and the suffering is very great the suffering is for longer time period on the other hand people even born in modest or bad circumstances if they do good karma then what happens that the suffering is reduced and the bad time is quickly over good time comes and the, because they are doing good karmas and the enjoyments will be much more right this is the setup of karma which works this is the karma kanda opinion now as per opinion of shrimad bhagavad gita as per the opinion of krishna the point is that people even who are people those people even those people who are doing good karma satvik karmas they are going to get some enjoyment in heaven after the result of their good karma is over they will be born in this earth they will enjoy if they continue to do good karma their enjoyments etc will continue but they will not get emancipation to get the emancipation one have to eventually take on to nishkam karma or devotion surrender to god to break free from the chain of karma nishkam karma is the key this is what we are going to understand rajas karma what happens with rajas karma as per sri krishna in the rajas karma while doing it you enjoy but later on rajas karma gives you miseries only tamas karma gives you miseries while doing tamas karma give you miseries later on and tamas karma give you miseries in end also tamasic people are generally born in bad circumstances so as per the philosophy of krishna which is uh, you know and condensation of the vedic philosophy not the karma kanda philosophy but the vedic philosophy is that a person does a particular type of karma right you say theft etc you know some bad karma one does now as a result of that bad karma what happens that the result of the karma the person is going to suffer in heaven or hell but there is a particular emotion samskar that is related to that karma that samskar remains right that samskar remains in tantra it is called kanchuk in vedic philosophy it is called samskar these are the seeds atmanu me kosha prana me kosha vigyana me kosha etc as the soul is born again these karmas or whatever is fixed these samskaras attached to the soul and as a result of that sanskara person continues to do good or bad karma right these are gunas satva guna rajas guna and tamas guna so a soul who, which is engaged in a bad karma tamas karma they get enjoyment in have enjoyment or punishment in heaven or hell and after that when the soul is to born when the soul takes the body the tamas samskara from the previous life comes to the soul comes to the body now because the body engages with tamas karma they continue to do the tamas karma as a result of tamas karma from the previous life there is already suffering etc in the life in their life and further because of the tamas traits tamas guna that they have got they continue to do more bad karma and the suffering becomes more intense and the time of suffering is increased manifold and this is the process this is how it works and to break free from it nishkam karma is what is recommended right this have to be understood right so when it comes to the karmas that one does in this life there are three type of karmas mainly one is nishiddha karma kamya karma and kartavya karma nishiddha karma is something which is prohibited prohibited as per the shastras right krishna says very clearly that things which cannot be known by native himself those things should be done as per the injunction of shastras 
ਸੋ ਕਰਮਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਹਿਬਿਟਡ ਇਨ ਸ਼ਾਸਤਰਾ ਜੋ ਨਿਸ਼ਿਧ ਕਰਮਾ ਰਾਈਟ ਥੈਫਟ ਐਕਸਟਰਾ ਮੈਰਿਟਲ ਅਫੇਅਰ ਵਾਇਲੈਂਸ ਸਪੀਕਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਸ ਈਟਿੰਗ ਫੋਰਬਿਡਨ ਫੂਡ ਰਾਈਟ ਜੋਕਿੰਗ ਨੇਚਰ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਇਨ ਨਾਨ ਸੀਰੀਅਸ ਮੈਨਰ ਐਟਸੈਟਰਾ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਆਲ ਨਿਸ਼ਿਧ ਕਰਮਾਸ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਨਿਸ਼ਿਧ ਕਰਮਾ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਫ ਤਾਮਸ ਗੁਨਾ ਤਮਸ ਕੁਆਲਿਟੀ ਦ ਰਿਜ਼ਲਟ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਬੈਡ ਅਨਦਰ ਇਜ਼ ਕਾਮੇ ਕਰਮਾ ਕਾਮੇ ਕਰਮਾ ਇਜ਼ kame means kame comes from the word kamana kamana means desire kame karma is things which are done out of desire and these are the things that you do for your loved one things that you do for your spouse things that you do for your children things that you do to accumulate money things that you do to avoid diseases and avoid troubles in life <coughs> sorry then there is kartavya karma kartavya karma is what is duty this is also called nitya karma this everyone should do this is a result of so nishidh karma is tamas kamya karma is rajas and kartavya karma is satvik kartavya karma or a duty of person is to is having devotion towards god worshiping god doing yagyas donations tapa austerities serving parents and guru and doing things as per the ashram one is in brahmachari one prasth grihastha sanyas this ashram and doing the karmas as per the varna right varna brahman chatriya vaishya shudra etc doing karmas according to that right this is essential to be done that's why it is called kartavya karma now if the kartavya karma involves some desire for example if one is serving parents to get some inheritance etc then it will also become kamya karma it will also become rajasik karma right so kartavya karma can also be taken as kamya karma for that matter but whether you will do the kamya karma or you will not do the kamya karma that depends on your free will but once you start doing the kamya karma once you start doing the karmas from the desire once you choose the result from your free will the further whatever is going to happen is fix it so it's not like that you can continue doing kamya karma and you can avoid the pain you cannot do it once you start doing kamya karma there have to be pain because rajasa dukha nivritti right rajas ends in dukha that you have to understand kartavya karma on the other hand is a dutiful action that is your duty right this is what is called dharma as well right so kartavya karma everyone have to do nishiddha karma one should not do kamya karma can be done but kamya karma when done with desire is a rajasik karma which results in misery right now from this kamya karma we understand that karma done with a desire is kamya karma now what if there is a karma done without desire this is called nishkama karma kam means desire nish means no without desire is nishkama karma this is selfless action kamya karma is desire given desire driven and kartavya karma is what is your duty so what krishna is saying krishna is saying that you should do nishkama karma when you do nishkama karma only then you have emancipation only then you break free from the chain of karma is right what happens with sakama karma or kamya karma the thing with respect to sakama karma or kamya karma is that as you start doing the karma right from the moment you think about it the time you are doing it and after finishing the karma also you are attached to the result of the karma the person thinks that okay if i will do this this will be the result right so said donation if one makes a donation by the purpose of they take the they take the point that i will do the donation it will give me name fame status i will do the donation i will take name fame status out of it while doing the donation they click some photos etc they put it on facebook youtube and other things to get name fame and status so here what is happening there is full desire even the donation is being done with respect to desire with to get name fame and status this is a desire thinking of result this is kamya karma one keeps on thinking in the desired result mind is entangled in the outcome that if i do this karma this will be the result that for donation i will get swarg etc i will get good result name fame status all of these things if the desired result comes in there is happiness but if the desired result does not come or if there is some obstacle in the you know if there is some obstacle in getting the desired result or the result is little bit less than what is desired then person feels miserable this is called ragadvesho kamat krodho abhijayate right in bhagavad gita right 
राग द्वेष इज देयर अटैचमेंट रिपल्जन इज देयर काम क्रोधो अभिजायते देयर इज डिजायर एंड व्हेन द डिजायर इज नॉट फुलफिल्ड देयर इज क्रोध देयर इज एंगर बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट राइट देयर इज फियर ऑफ फेलियर इन काम्य कर्म आल्सो देयर इज फियर ऑफ फेलियर इन द थिंग्स दैट यू डू बिकॉज़ ऑफ डिजायर राइट एंड बिकॉज़ द माइंड इज आल्सो एंटेंगल्ड इन गेटिंग द डिजायर रिजल्ट्स when the person thinks that i may not get the desired result being suspicious of their failure one can also engage in nishidh karma or prohibited karma which is not told to be done right so this is the problem with kamya karma or rajasik karma that because the person is very much attached with the result and sometimes when they see that i may not be getting the result they may do few things which is sinful also which is prohibited as well दस काम्य कर्मा और सकाम कर्मा इज टोल्ड टू बी अवॉइडेड राइट इट डज नॉट लीड टू इमांसिपेशन ऑन द अदर हैंड निष्काम कर्मा इज विदाउट एनी डिजायर और विदाउट एनी अटैचमेंट द पर्सन इज नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट सक्सेस और फेलियर ऑफ वट एवर कर्मा दे आर डूइंग दे आर नॉट इंपेक्टेड बाय एनी हैप्पीनेस और सोरो बिकॉज देर इज डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम द रिजल्ट ऑफ द कर्मा इट इज अ सेल्फलेस कर्मा person generally does this karma as a sense of duty right that this is my duty to do it like kamya karma is done for rewards kamya karma is done with the desires kamya karma is done to fulfill the wishes and desires of indriyas manas etc man chitta buddhi ahankar to fulfill the desire of these things kamya karma is done that's why it is kamya karma niskam karma is done purely either to please god or for some other reason right so this niskam karma can also be of two ways both the ways are mentioned in bhagavad gita both the ways lead to same result niskam karma first of all it can be done without attachment to god it can be done without bhakti it can be done with bhakti without bhakti nishkam karma is done as that it is my duty to do it is more or less like the person is thinking that okay because i am you know blessed by divinity with wealth it is my duty to donate they do not desire anything from the result this is also nishkam karma this is also the karma done without desire but without bhakti right on the other hand there are some desire, there are karmas which are done with respect to with bhakti right where the person is having this particular thing in mind that i am doing this to please god the purpose of the bhakti is that everything that i may get in this world all this worldly happiness is inferior to the company of god is inferior to the god realization so only god realization is most important thus whatever they are doing they are doing it for god only right this is bhakti based nishkam karma there can be non bhakti based nishkam karma also both the ways can be there but what happens why bhakti based in iskam karma i propagate because you said donation so if someone donates 10 rupees it can be complete iskam right because donating 10 rupees is not much one can do it but when one is donating you say 20 lakh 30 lakh rupees then one may also think that oh if i am donating so much money you know my name should be taken there should be a plank by my name people should know that how great donor i am ego can come because it is done without devotion and it is natural nature of mind to go towards rajas right on the other hand when the same karma is done with respect to bhakti keeping in mind because god have given me i am giving it to the world etc keeping in mind that everything belongs to god only that every person is having a soul which is representation of god only in this particular way the natural bad tendencies which can come with nishkam karma without bhakti does not attach going to this particular reason only i believe nishkam karma with bhakti is more superior nishkam karma with bhakti is what should be recommended to people because it is safer it can be easily implemented and problems doshas issues don't come very quickly into it right this point is to be understood now nishkam karma with respect to bhakti in bhagavad gita also it is of two types right but first of all one have to understand that in nishkam karma also you cannot do nishidh karma in nishkam karma kamya karma is to kamya karma is to sakam karma that is not nishkam karma at all but nishidh karma is also 
निश्चित कर्मा कैन ऑल्सो नॉट बी डन विथ यू नो निष्काम कर्मा दो कर्मा ओनली विच लीड टू गॉड डेवोशन भजन सिंगिंग एक्सेट्रा कर्मा विच इज परमिटेड बाय गॉड कर्माज विच इज टोल्ड इन शास्त्र एंड कर्माज विच डू नॉट कॉज ट्रेवल टू एनी वन राइट दीज कर्माज आर नॉट निश्चित कर्माज अदर कर्माज आर निश्चित कर्माज राइट कर्माज विच डू नॉट लीड टू गॉड कर्माज विच आर नॉट परमिटेड बाय गॉड कर्माज विच इज नॉट टोल्ड इन शास्त्र कर्माज विच कॉज ट्रेबल टू पीपल इज निश्चित कर्मा निश्चित कर्मा डज नॉट कम इन टू निष्काम कर्मा कैटेगरी एवर राइट सो वॉट इज प्रोहिबिटेड इन शास्त्र टू बी डन शुड नॉट बी डन एट ऑल For example, there can be a question that if two countries are fighting, right? Then because you know countries are fighting for the benefit of their own people, <clears throat> does fight become a good karma? Certainly not, because it is causing trouble to people. So four conditions: karma is leading to God, karma is permitted by God, karma is told by the shastras, and karma is not causing trouble to anyone. And these four conditions should be there in nishkam karma. In doing nishkam karma, also if you go through Bhagavad Gita, two type of things are mentioned: mad arpanam, mad artham. Two things are there, right? These are there in different different shlokas. We may look at some shlokas later on, if the time permits. Now, mad arpanam and mad artham. Two things are there. Mad arpanam, arpan means dedication. Mad arpanam is a type of karma that one have started doing because of some reason or the other. Generally, because of attachment. or some other reason but eventually while doing the karma in between or later on while getting the results gives the result to god for example one is earning money for their own after earning money some amount of money which is left out etc they give it to god they they give it to the service of god devotees etc this is mad arpanam this is also good right another thing is mad artham things which are done for god only right such as serving the god right so purpose right from the beginning the purpose is to serve god only this is mad artham for the god right for me mad artham means for me right this is krishna saying in bhagavad gita so he is saying in self sense right mad arpana means karma which is done for some other reason but the result is eventually dedicated to god both of them are good mad arpana is also of two many types three types basically Mad arpanam one is doing karma to get God. For example, donations etc. You know that if I do donations, I will please God etc. This is mad arpanam. That you are doing donations to get God, please God. Doing karma as per the order of God, shastra based karmas. For example, Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita to say, do your own karma. Right? Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita that. so regarding so dharma he says that that doing your own so dharma no matter how imperfect it is should be done rather than trying to do someone else's dharma right because this is told by god himself this is told by shastras doing it is also mad arpanam because you are listening to the advice of god and thirdly is that you are doing work for the god only right this is mad arpanam sorry this is mad artham right where you are doing the karma for god only this is <laughs> serving the god such as bhakti serving the god serving the devotee serving the temple etc this type of karma is karma that you do to get god karma which is which is mentioned by god which is mentioned by shastras and karma that is dedicated to god done for god all of these karmas they do not bind you right the and when you continue to do such karmas because there is no binding to the result the person eventually get emancipation right the result of karma is there is no result for karma at all karma does not bind you the attachment to the karma and attachment to the result of karma is what binds you becomes the reason of birth and the cycle of life become the reason of suffering and all of these things right so mad arpanam mad artham you will do there will be no attachment to the result of karma any karma you may do that is all okay right this have to be understood now one more thing is there because nishkam karma one is doing Now two things are there. Sometimes you are doing this kam karma. Other times you are not doing it. This is the normal state. But to completely break free from the chain of karma, there should always be nishkam karma. Every karma should be nishkam karma. Nishkam karma. Person who is completely into nishkam karma, such person will not do anything which is not for God. 
theft, etc. Such things which is in Nishiddha karma because they do not lead to God. Such karmas one will not do. And this person will also not waste his time. So Nishkam karma person, particularly Bhakti Nishkam karma person, when they are not doing any karma, they will, because one cannot remain without doing karmas. When they are not doing any karma, they will, because one will be thinking something, this is Manishik karma is there, Vaicharik karma is there. Right, so they will not waste their time. Even when they are free, they will be think, constantly thinking about God only. Because sitting idle is alasya, that is tamas karma. Right, so sitting idle, wasting time, sleeping, etc., nidra, alasya, etc., are all tamasic tendencies. So one who is firmly established in nishkam karma will first of all not do anything which is not ordained by God, which is not for God. Nishid karmas they will not do. Neither they will waste their time in tamasic karmas, which is wasting time itself is a tamasic karma, but will remember God in their free time also. Whatever Nishid karma yogi will do, Nishid karma person will do, right? They will be self-satisfied in that. Right? Sriyana so dharmo priya, right? Some shloka like this is there in Bhagavad Gita. Where it is told that whatever is your swadharma, you should follow that. You should not look at what others are doing. Right? You are permitted to, you are supposed to do your own karma, no matter how imperfectly you are doing it. You are not supposed to look at others' karmas, right? So just looking at what others are doing, trying to copy them, etc., is also a rajas tendency which also should be avoided. Right? So as per your, you know, as per your swadharma, whatever is your karma that you should do. And don't be competitive to or jealous to what others are doing because this will again be rajas and tamas which will again bind you. Right? Whatever you are best into or whatever is your personal best possible way, you try to find God through that best possible way. And this you have to understand. Right? This have to be understood. Now, right from the beginning where we started about the karma, vikarma and akarma, all of these things should be understood. Karma is something which gives you happiness in this life and in next life also. This is sattvic karma. Right? Vikarma is something which gives you suffering in this life and suffering in next life also. This is rajas and tamas karma. And akarma is no karma, that is nishkam karma. Now, one have to understand that it is eventually the motivation that matters. Because every karma can be karma, vikarma or akarma. Karmas you are generally doing with your mind, speech and body. Right? If you are doing something to fulfill your desire, but with pure emotions, for example, you are trying to earn money to sustain yourself and eventually whatever is left, you devote, you dedicate it to God. This is karma, right? This is a karma that you are doing. You do it with attachment. You get karmic results. You do it with detachment. You do not get binded by the result. In any way, this is a sattvic karma. Results will be good only. You are following your dharma, trying to take care of your family. All okay. The same karma. Right? Told in the shastra as you do it, but with evil intentions. Then in that particular scenario, because it has tamoguna, it becomes papa karma. Right? As it is told, Mura grehe natmano yat pedaya kriyate tapaha paratse sadhanartham va tatta masa mudahartham. Right? The one who is trying to, you know, give pain to himself and others, doing things with evil intentions, etc., is a tamasic karma. And even if you are doing shastri karma, karma told in shastras with evil intention, it becomes a bad karma, it becomes a papa karma, it becomes a vikarma. On the other hand, that any karma that you do without attachment to the result, only with the purpose to get the company of God, get the realization of God, will be a karma which will be liberating. Right? Everything. For example, hinsa also. <coughs> Punishing etc. as well. If you do it with the intention of doing good of the society in this life or in the next life, though it may look that himsa or violence is a karma, but it is karma only because it is being done for good. 
such as a uh, you know a parent is scolding the child for their betterment only it is karma only right it is not a karma or it is not a bad karma as such but doing forbidden karma such as you know drinking alcohol extra medal affair theft etc any such karma because it cannot be done with good intentions these are all vikarma these are all bad karmas which will give you suffering etc right and if you there is some punishment etc that is given himsa etc is done violence etc is done but if it is done without attachment or if it is done without ego for example a judge is punishing a criminal they are not punishing because the criminal have committed the crime with the judge right so there is no attachment or ego into it they are doing it to sustain the law and order of the society this is a karma this does not bind the judge to the result of the karma as such right in even in sanyas also if some someone is very much egoistic of i have left everything in this world you know i am sanyasi and all sort of things even if such ego is there then even being reunited being a sanyasi is a karma which will bind you the same sanyasi if they you know fake something or if they do something because of fear or greed or if they do something that they are not destined to do as per the shastras it will become a heinous vikarma which will give them bad results later on right because it is either rajas or tamas right this is to be very clearly understood so there are two things which comes out of it right to break free from the chain of karma one will have to do karmas with their utmost dedication and devotion to god without attachment basically you want to do karma without attachment now this karma without attachment can be done with devotion can be done without devotion that is all okay now the point is the ashramas are there brahmachari grihasth vanaprastha sanyas and there is brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra these four things are also there right so first of all the child from the moment they are born till the time of marriage they are in brahmachari ashram when they are studying in brahmachari ashram you should only study grihastha ashram is after getting marriage up to the age of 50 55 right one one is in grihastha ashram where they should take care of their family members children etc and at this point of time the duty is to serve the society serve the guests and take care of the family members later on one goes into one prast when they are supposed to live separately with their spouse right so live with the spouse and live separately from others let the children live in their own family not disturbing the children one should be dependent on each other only living with spouse doing things for each other and later on in the very old age sanyas should be taken right this is generally in today's scenario i will say that as long as one is studying one should only focus into study going into love relationships and other things should be avoided only study should be the focus after getting marriage married till the age of 55 60 till sexual activity is there one should be engaged in their family life take care of their family children etc and do all the things as soon as children grow up and settle in their life one should go into one prastha ashram be with their spouse and take care of each other and do not interfere in the life of children etc and later on after the death of the spouse one should take on to sanyas and do the things related to sanyas right more elaborations on this can be done but i believe uh, for the time being this much uh, knowledge in uh, this much thing in that shall will be fine so with respect to swadharma brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra there is a discussion whether the caste is from birth or the caste is from the karma some will support that caste is from the birth some will support that caste is from the karma this is all okay we are astrologers right <clears throat> so we go by horoscope for me being an astrologer horoscope is important right i believe in horoscope i go by horoscope the karma of the person we should be decided as per the swadharma of the person i believe should be seen with respect to second and 11th house in horoscope planet situated in second and 11th house in horoscope 
Planets are divided into categories, right? Brahman, Venus, Jupiter are Brahmins. Kshatriya, Mars, Sun are Kshatriyas. Vaishya, Mercury is considered a, uh, sorry, Moon is considered a Vaishya. Mercury is generally considered a Shudra. Saturn, Rahu, Ketu are considered Antijas, etc. Right, but they should also be taken in the category of Shudra. In fact, I will tell you from my experience, I will tell you, take Sun to be a Kshatriya, Moon to be a Vaishya, Mars to be a Kshatriya, Mercury to be a Vaishya, Jupiter to be a Brahman, Venus to be a Brahman, Saturn to be a Shudra, Rahu Ketu to be a Shudra. Now, based on the planets situated in the second and eleventh house, the karma of the person, the dharma of the person is to be understood. That is one thing. If there are many planets in these houses, more than one planet in the house, then basic astrological principle is the most powerful planet. Show the result. Go by the most powerful planet. To decide the most powerful planet, you know exalted planet is most powerful, followed by a planet in Mulutrikona Rashi, followed by a planet in Own Rashi, followed by a planet in Varguttam, followed by a planet in Exalted Navamsh, followed by a planet in Own Navamsh, followed by a planet in Friendly Rashi, followed by a planet in Inimical Rashi, followed by a debilitated planet, followed by a combust planet. Followed by planet, planetary war and all sort of things, right? This we have discussed in many of the previous videos, so accordingly. Now the Brahmin karma is to engage in study, right? Brahmin karma is basically scholarly karma. So teaching, reading, researching, working with knowledge, these are all Brahminikar karmas. That one should do. Kshatriya karma is protection, upholding the law, rules and regulations. Right? Protection primarily. Security, etc. All of these things are Kshatriya Karmas. Law, punishment, judge, judiciary, police. These are all the Kshatriya Karmas. Vaishya Karma is related to business and agriculture. Shudra Karma is serving others. And agriculture can also be included in Shudra Karma. Agriculture is basically all the three types of Karma. Except for Kshatriyas, all three can do agriculture as well. And these are the Karmas in basics. Ba basic Karmas are these, right? So teaching, studying, researching, these are all Brahman karmas. And karma one generally does with respect to their profession. Chhatri karma is security, police, army, judiciary, law and punishment. Vaishya karma is related to business, making products, commerce, trading, dealing with things, etc. And Shudra karma is service. Right? Serving someone, right? Like be, be pure into service, right? service providing. That is what Shudra karma is. As per the horoscope, karma should be chosen. Now see, I have one very clear approach in astrology that you see, can you not do something that you want? Certainly you can. Certainly you can. One can do anything that they want. But if you want to get success, there is one particular thing. You can do anything, whatever you wish. But you will get success only when you sail your boat with respect to the direction of the wind. The direction of the wind with, is seen with respect to astrology. When you choose an astrological karma for yourself, you are not only successful in the karma, you are successful, you are contented, you are happy. That karma is easy for you and that karma is what brings you fortune, right? The complete purpose of studying the astrology is activating the fortune. So when you do the karma as per your horoscope, this will be your swadharma. It will be as per the injunctions of what Krishna is told in Bhagavad Gita, because either you take karma by birth or you take karma by, you know, or, or if, sorry, if you take dharma by birth or if you take dharma by karma, it is very good as long as you are dealing with Hindus, as, as long as you are do, dealing with Indian people. But as someone who is dealing with people inter, internationally, how will you decide the, the, you know, by birth dharma of people born in foreign lands, right? Certainly, so astrology is always a superior answer. That's why it is called the eye of the Vedas. Because at that point of time where you cannot see anything, right, then you are supposed to use astrology for that, right? This is the divine eye, this is the divine side. That's why Jyotish Vedanam Chakshu, right? Jyotish is the eye of the Veda. This is the point. This is to be understood. For example, you say you take the horoscope of Ramakrishna Paravans. In the horoscope of Shri Ramakrishna Paramahans, if you look at the horoscope, just sharing it with you. What is happening in the horoscope? The 11th house is empty, second house is having Venus, that is an exalted Venus. What does Venus indicate? Venus indicates Brahminical Karma. 
right so he was a brahmin by birth also and he was engaged in brahmin kalakarma spirituality etc he was indicated he was indulged in right these are the karmas that he is supposed to do in the same manner for example if, say take this horoscope in this particular horoscope ketu is situated in the second house this person is supposed to do shudra karma right so any service providing work he should do particularly related to ketu or any service providing work is what is the dharma of the person they will follow this dharma this will be good for them right this have to be understood this have to be understood very clearly for example if you take the horoscope of trump jupiter is there in the second house mercury and saturn is there in the 11th house now in this particular case three planets are there in the three planets which is most powerful mercury situated in own rashi is powerful what i told you mercury is vaishya karma do shastra say mercury is shudra but i take mercury to be vaishya i told you initially now vaishya karma means business you know donald trump is a big businessman that's right? so in business he is successful this is the particular thing right donald trump can do anything whatever he wants right that's not a problem but when you will do things related to your horoscope when you will do things related to your birth horoscope which reflects your true dharma then you will be very successful then you will be rewarded by god then this because this is what you are supposed to do there is a saying na you cannot expect a fish to climb a tree right fish will swim so one is good with whatever they are born with good with their qualities and to know your qualities know the inherent things astrology is there that this is the real purpose and real uses of astrology this way you should know your dharma and follow your dharma accordingly if there is no planet steve jobs you take i believe steve jobs is not having any planet as such as far as i remember uh, steve jobs is also having jupiter ketu you take one horoscope suppose we take where there is no planet in second and 11th house is also having some planets so if there is no planet in the second and the 11th house then what you do for you go by aspect first right no planet you go by aspect whichever is the most powerful aspecting planet you go by the planet if there is no aspecting planet then what you do then check which rashis are situated in second house and 11th house and check the planet situated in the same rashis in d9 chart take the most powerful planet if there is no planet situated in either of these rashis in the d9 chart then you see which planets are that which planets are lord of these two houses then go as per the lordship but remember the order first planet situated in the second and the 11th house then planet aspecting these houses then planet situated in these rashis in uh, rashis falling in these houses in navamsha then eventually by the lord in any case more than one influence is there you take the most powerful one based on that you decide the dharma of the person and when one does thing when one will do things according to their dharma then in that particular scenario one will be successful many a times it can happen that there is a service providing business you may take the person to be doing business but the business is actually of service providing so the dharma is service providing only they are doing it with uh, business or they are doing it as an employee that is another thing that should be seen with respect to raj yoga and horoscope right so this is how you decide the dharma of the person now there uh, there is one thing right dharma is to be followed nishkam karma we talked about nishkam karma now who can do nishkam karma right nishkam karma as you know is a karma done without attachment generally the purpose of the karma is to get the company of god right to get god realize god as per my experience people who have a powerful 10th lord exalted 10th lord 10th lord in own rashi 10th lord aspecting the 10th house 10th lord situated in kendra's corners right these people generally do nishkam karma these people at a point of as at a point in their life generally when maturity comes they are either doing nishkam karma right from the beginning they are spiritual people or at a point of time after some realization they start doing nishkam karma right because Tenth Lord, in a good situation, all of the situations that I told you, the person is supposed to do the best karma, and the best karma is nishkam karma because it does not entangle you with the result of karmas, right? So these people, after these people are generally spiritual right by birth. These people are doing nishkam karma right by birth can be taken into spiritual category or actual spiritual category, right? Or after realization, as per the manifestation in dasha antar dasha, the person eventually. 
डज निष्काम कर्मा दीज पीपल डू निष्काम कर्मा Now the purpose in astrology, our purpose in astrology is not to become happy by looking at your horoscope and saying, "Oh, oh, oh I am doing a lot of nishkam karma." It's not this particular way. There have to be self-reflection also. If you have such combinations in your horoscope, tenth lord is powerful. Tenth lord is influencing the tenth house. Tenth lord is in own rashi exaltation. Tenth lord is situated in Kendra Kona, one, four, seven, ten, five, nine houses. Then nishkam karma is what you are supposed to do. The realization will come with time. but what if the realization comes one day after before your death or you know very late it is of no use because the nishkam karma done will be very little right this is also told in spiritual text particular in bhagavad gita that to remember god at the time of death is liberating but one does not know when death will come and one cannot suddenly start doing what they have never done so always remember god because it is very certain when one will die So in the same scenario, if if there is a combination for nishkam karma, you have seen this video. Start doing nishkam karma and how to do nishkam karma. What are the traits of the nishkam karma, etc. We have just discussed. So start doing nishkam karma. This is good. This will be liberating for you. You have the combination. You do it. For those who are not having the combination for nishkam karma, see, if we are not having combination of getting rich, what we will do? Will we stop working for wealth? will we leave all the hope certainly not with respect to wealth i always say that there are combinations for the person to become rich or not become rich that is all okay but to earn enough money to sustain yourself get food on your table and sustain your family member there is no scarcity right anyone who is doing this is why spirituality is there <coughs> this is why remedies are designed right if astrology to everything you see in astrology then why remedies are there if destiny is so powerful destiny may deny someone becoming rich but destiny will not deny someone living a good life living a good life everyone can live a good life so for those people who are not having these combinations of nishkam karma they should understand that in their horoscope there is a natural tendency that they will generally do sakam karma or nisiddh karmas right 10th lord is going into bad situation combust planetary war etc there is high tendency of the person doing nisiddh karma which will be very problematic tamasic karma these are on the other hand 10th lord is not in nishkam karma category 10th lord is not in nisiddh karma category in the third category person generally does kamya karmas which is motivated by rajas eventually gives you misery in that scenario also if nisiddh karma or kamya karma is indicated from the 10th lord but these are not the type of karmas that you are supposed to do this is what krishna tells you so to improve your 10th lord <coughs> sorry do good karma and break free from the chain of karma you should start doing nishkam karma it can be a bit difficult for you it can be a bit challenging for you but even if going on good path is difficult and challenging does it mean that we should not go on the path no absolutely not we should go on the path and we should do it right so in any case nishkam karma should be done and if you are not having a combination for nishkam karma it is very essential for you to do and if you are having the combination to do nishkam karma then realize it and do it as soon as possible all the ways right do nishkam karma because this is what is the message of krishna and the message of krishna is what we should follow particularly with respect to nishkam karma the thing is sukha dukhe samay kritwa labha labho jaya jaya tato yuddha yasva naim papa mavasasi sukha dukhe samay kritwa labha labho jaya jayo the one who have the same state of mind in sukha dukha happiness misery labha labho gain or no gain jaya jayo victory or defeat that person is doing nishkam karma right this particular approach you should have right esa te abhita sankhe buddhi yoge timasunu buddhe ayukto yaya parta karma bandham prahasati krishna says in bhagavad gita राइट बुद्धि योगे तुमाचुणु बुद्ध्या युक्तो यया पार्थ कर्म बंधम कर्म बंधम प्रहसी बुद्ध्या युक्तो विथ बुद्धि विथ इंटेलिजेंस विथ नॉलेज रिलेटेड टू कर्मा यया पार्थ यू ओ पार्थ कर्म बंधम कर्म बंधम प्रहसी यू विल नॉट बी इंटेंगल्ड इन द रिजल्ट ऑफ कर्म आज राइट सो यू डू निष्काम कर्मा यू विल नॉट बी इंटेंगल्ड इन द रिजल्ट ऑफ कर्म आज कृष्णा इज टेलिंग इट वेरी क्लियरली वॉट ही इज ऑल्सो से कर्मण्य वाधिकारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचन मा कर्मफुल हेतुर भुरमा ते संगस्तु अकर्मणि कर्मण्य वा अधिकारस्ते टू डू कर्मा इज ओनली योर अधिकार राइट योर ओनली 
లైక్ రైట్ ఇస్ టు డూ కర్మ మా ఫలేసు కదాచన్ బట్ నాట్ ఇన్ ద రిజల్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద కర్మ మా కర్మ ఫల హేతుర్ బురుమ తే సంగస్తు అకర్మని రైట్ యువర్ రైట్ ఈస్ ఓన్లీ టు వర్క్ యువర్ రైట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఇన్ ద ఫ్రూట్ ఆఫ్ ద వర్క్ బికాస్ యూ ఆర్ నాట్ ద వన్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ హూమ్ ద రిజల్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద కర్మ ఈస్ కమింగ్ సో డూ నాట్ థింక్ డూ నాట్ థింక్ ఇట్ దిస్ వే రైట్ అండ్ బికాస్ యూ కెన్ నాట్ కంట్రోల్ ద రిజల్ట్ you should not stop doing karma because karma you cannot stop doing right so if you think that because i have no right on the result of the karma i will not do any karma this should also not be done why because this is to not do any karma is tamas and tamas is problematic right this you have to understand then he says yogastha kuru karmani sangam te kattva dananjaya siddhe siddho samo bhutva samattvam yogi uchyate being steadfast in yoga union Yo- yoga means union yoga is the union of the person and the god right realizing that i am one with god abandoning the attachment with respect to whether there will be success or failure in whatever i am doing being of the same mind in whatever you do having the same state of mind in whatever you do if you have this abandoning the attachment to any result related to karma abandoning the attachment to success and failure and always having the same state of mind is what is called yoga that is being one with god leaving the attachment this have to be this have to be manifested karma jam buddhi yukta hi phalam takatva manisina janma bandhavine mukta padam gachchante namayam wise people having the evenness of mind in whatever they do some of the sukha dukham same krutva la bhala bo jaya ji right wise people having evenness in mind in all victory defeat happiness misery etc abandoning the fruit of their actions not attaching with the fruit of their action they become free from birth and death and such people go beyond all the type of evil whatever is there right దూరేణ హివరమ కర్మ బుద్ధి యోగా ధనంజయ బుద్ధ సరన్ మన్ విచ్ఛ కృప్యా ఫలహేతవ వర్కింగ్ విత్ డిజైర్ డూయింగ్ సంథింగ్ హ్యావింగ్ డిజైర్ ఇన్ యువర్ మైండ్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ఫీరియర్ టు దట్ కర్మ విచ్ ఈస్ డన్ వితౌట్ ఎనీ డిజైర్ ఇన్ మైండ్ దస్ ధనంజయ్ నేమ్ ఫర్ అర్జున్ you should have evenness in your mind evenness in happiness misery etc because those people who do something only to get the result such people are wretched people such people are kripan people bad people right kripan is a tamas tendency buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukrit duskrite tasmat dhogaye yujasva yoga karma sukausalam having the evenness of mind in all happiness misery victory defeat you will free yourself in this life from all the vices and virtue devote yourself to this yoga to this union of yourself on god because yoga is the dexterity of work yoga karma su kausalam because yoga is to know how to do your karma in the best possible way this is what yoga is that the yoga patanjali is also the same yoga మయి సర్వాని కర్మాన్ని సన్నస్యాధాత్మచేతసా నిరీశి నిరీషి నిర్మమో భుత్వ యుధస్వ విగత జ్వర రినౌన్సింగ్ ఆల్ యాక్షన్స్ టు మీ టు గాడ్ విత్ మైండ్ సెంటర్డ్ ఆన్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ యువర్ రియల్ నేచర్ దట్ యువర్ సోల్ గెటింగ్ రిడ్ ఆఫ్ ఎనీ హోప్ అండ్ ఎనీ టైప్ ఆఫ్ సెల్ఫ్ సెల్ఫిష్నెస్ ఫైట్ అర్జున్ బీయింగ్ ఫ్రీ ఫ్రమ్ ఎనీ టైప్ ఆఫ్ మెంటల్ ఫీవర్ ఎనీ టైప్ ఆఫ్ మెంటల్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ so he is saying that renounce the result of all the actions to me that whatever i am doing i am doing it to please god whatever result is going to come don't think of the result be focused on your true nature that you have you have soul which represents god do not have any hope or any selfishness and do whatever you are doing whatever your karma is arjun is a chatriya his karma is to fight his karma is to protect that he should do and you should do whatever your karma is as per the horoscope as i just explained
ब्रह्मण्याधाय कर्मानी संगम ते कत्वा करोती यह लिप्यते ना स पापे ना पद्म पत्र मिबाम बसा द वन हु डज नॉट द वन हु डज एक्शन फॉर सेकिंग एनी अटैचमेंट रिजाइनिंग एवरीथिंग टू ब्रह्मन दैट पर्सन इज नॉट सॉइल्ड बाय इविल लाइक अ लोटस सॉइल इज नॉट टेंटेड बाय वाटर सो इफ यू डू नॉट हैव अटैचमेंट एंड ऑल द कर्मा यू डेडिकेट टू गॉड ब्रह्मन then evil you will not be corrupted by evil this have to be understood tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam nusmar yuddh cha mayyarpit mano buddhi mame vaisasya sanseh therefore at all times constantly remember god and do your work with mind and intellect absorbed in god one will 100% achieve god पत्रम पुष्पम फलम तोयम यो मे भक्तिया प्रयति तदहम भक्तु पहत मसनामी प्रयतात्म इफ वन ऑफर्स विद डिवोशन इवन अ लीफ अ फ्लावर अ फ्रूट और इवन सिंपल वॉटर देन वॉट एवर इज डन विद डिवोशन बाय अ प्योर माइंडेड पर्सन गॉड हंड्रेड पर्सन एक्सेप्ट इट सो एनी कर्मा दैट यू विल डू विथ devotion whether the karma is good or bad does not matter god will suddenly accept it yat karosi yat dasanashi yajj hosi dadasi yat yat pasyasi konteya tat krusu madarpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you give in sacrifice whatever you give otherwise whatever activity you do whatever practice you do you do it as an offering to god ये तो सर्वाणी कर्माणी मयि सन्यस्य मत परा अन्य न योगेन मा ध्यायन्त उपासते तेसा महम समुद्धरता मृत्यु संसार सागरात भवामि न चिरात पार्थ मैया वेशित चेतसाम दोज हु वर्शिप गॉड गिविंग द रिजल्ट ऑफ ऑल द एक्शंस टू गॉड टेकिंग गॉड एज द सुप्रीम गोल मेडिटेटिंग ऑन गॉड विद अ सिंगल माइंडेड योगा अटैचमेंट यूनियन टू गॉड people whose mind is set on god they become one with god and god saves them from all the miseries of this world abhyase apy samartho asi mat karma paramo bhav madart maapi karmani kurvan siddhim mavapasisi if one is unable to practice but one wants to do karma for god then even impact imperfect karma done for god with dedication devotion to god person whatever they do even imperfect if they do it for god as a devotion to god to serve god all the imperfect karmas are also made perfect by god himself because he is gracious yattah pravrti bhutanam yena sarvam idam tatam swakarmana तम अभ्यर्च सिद्धि विंदती मानव फ्रॉम हूम इज द इवल्यूशन ऑफ ऑल बींग्स फ्रॉम हूम ऑल ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड इज प्रिवेटेड वर्शिपिंग दैट हूम वर्शिपिंग दैट फ्रॉम हूम द इवल्यूशन ऑफ ऑल बींग्स गॉड फ्रॉम हूम ऑल इज प्रिवेटेड गॉड वर्शिपिंग गॉड इज द वर्शिपिंग गॉड विथ हिज ओन ड्यूटी वर्शिपिंग दैट गॉड विद द कर्माज मैन अटेन्स परफेक्शन राइट सो डेडिकेटिंग एंड डेवोटिंग युअर वर्क टू गॉड यू विल अटेन परफेक्शन सर्व सर्वकर्मापि सदा कुरवानो मद व्यपाश्रय मत प्रसाद दवापनोति शाश्वत पदम व्यय वन इज ऑलवेज डूइंग एक्शंस बट हु हैव टेकन रिफ्यूज इन गॉड बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड सच पर्सन अटेन्स एटर्नल एंड इम्यूटेबल स्टेट चेतसा सर्वकर्मा मयि सन्यस्य मत्पर बुद्धि योग मुपाश्रित मच्चित satatam bhava resigning mentally all deeds to god having god as the highest goal highest goal resorting to this knowledge always fix your mind on god yastu yastu indriyani manasa niyamya rabhyate rabhyate arjun karma indriye karma yog masakta sa visishyate arjun the one controlling the senses by the mind who is unattached directs his organs of actions to the path of work 
that person becomes excellent right one who is working only for god such person becomes excellent in this world tasmad saktah satatam karyam karma samachar asakto yacharan karma paramap noti purushah therefore always perform always perform karmas which are obligatory which have to be done without attachment by performing action without attachment one attains the highest goal highest goal is of emancipation anasrutah karma phalam karyam karma karoti yah sa sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnir na chakriya those who perform the duty he is bonded to without attaching to the fruit of action that person have renounced action such person having steadfast mind even if he is not doing anything right is ever perfect the other person who is not doing anything though he may think that he is not doing anything but is actually doing things only the one who is doing karmas but is not attached to the action of the result is the actual person who is not doing anything etanyapi tu karmani sangam tikatva phalani cha कर्तव्या नीति में पार्थ निश्चित मतमुत्तम ऑल द वर्क्स शुड बी डन लिविंग अटैचमेंट टू द फ्रूट दिस इज माय बेस्ट एंड सर्टेन कन्विक्शन हु इज सेइंग दिस कृष्णा इज सेइंग दिस कार्य मित्ते यत कर्म नियतम क्रियते अर्जुन संगम तकत्वा फलम चैव स त्याग सात्विको मत when obligatory the work which is obligation when that work is performed only because it is to be done leaving the attachment to the fruit such work is satvik right this have to be understood so do the nishkam karma and only by doing the nishkam karma you will be freed from the cycle of birth and death and eventually get emancipation right nishkam karma is that